الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين استفى أما بعد فقال ربنا جل جلاله وعما نواله وإذ قال ربك للملائكة إني جعل في الأرض خليفة قالوا وتجعل فيها من يفسد فيها ويسفك الدماء ونحن نسبح بحمدك ونقدس لك قال إني أعلم ما لا تعلمون صدق الله مولانا العظيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد مع الوجود الكرم وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم وصل عليه So in the previous verses a theme to the verses is emerging if I could jog your memory back the having ascribed uh, attributes of three different kinds of people Allah Azza wa Jal then turns to the real objective of our creation why we are actually here and the discussion is instigated by huwa alladhi khalaka lakum ma fil ardi jami'a everything is for you like uh, this is just an example like a father says to his children what am i doing all of this for why am i struggling this is all for you of course that doesn't apply to allah azza wa jalla because allah doesn't struggle but look at the tone in which Allah Azza wa Jal instigates this discussion. Huwa alladhi khalaka lakum. For you. Everything is made for you. And then, having uh, given that opening statement, sorry, I, I forgot one verse. When he talks about, um, he starts talking, I forgot two verses. He talks about an oath which we have apparently given, which we have no knowledge of. Um, the idea is to stimulate within us a, a desire. Well, if you don't know about this oath, we'll find out about this oath. It's your business to find out about this oath. Because you are uh, 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 liable for this oath on the Day of Judgment. Now that's a very serious matter. That you are being held liable for something you have no knowledge of. So part of our quest is to rediscover that oath in our life. What was that oath? What did it entail? What did it require from us? Did it just require us to be robots? Unfortunately, the scholarship of today would like the ummah to behave like robots. Do this, don't do this. Do this, don't do this. And there is no sense of purpose. It's a, it's a, it's a, a sense of... Um, uh, uh, um, it, it, it's, it's like a machine that just turns. Do this, don't do this. Do this. But Allah Azza wa Jal is provoking this thought in our mind that you have given an oath, you will be held liable for it, and if you don't know, then make it your business to know. And then having made that opening statement, then he says, now let me tell you a bit about this oath, because to find out about this oath, you need to find out about yourself, who you are. You know the golden questions which philosophers ask? Where have I come from? What am I? What am I doing here? Where am I going? These are golden questions. Then Allah talks about the golden question. That look, you had an existence which you don't remember. You don't, you don't remember this existence. But it was an existence. Now, I'm going to, uh, um, just for your, I, I don't know whether I mentioned it then, but again, just to add spice here, there is a uh, documentary that has come out called Surviving Death. And one of the episodes in that documentary is of children who claim that they existed before. So one child said, I was a World War II pilot, my, uh, a two-year-old two child. My uh, ship, uh, uh, my uh, plane was um, uh, um, bombed and I fell and this is what happened. Graphic detail. Then you have a child in Scotland, and these are, there are many examples of this, but uh, even on YouTube, it's full. And this is not a, a, a hoax. Psychologists are baffled why, how this happens. So you have a child who, grow, who says to his mother at the age of two, I have another mother, I have another father, and 
uh, uh, I have another home. He graphically describes the home in, uh, 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 in such detail. The mother initially thinks that this is maybe him, you know, watching TV or his imagination. But then she, his uh, vivid description of this family of his becomes more and more vivid, so much so that she calls a psychologist from America who, and you can see this is on the YouTube, and he, then the psychologist asks her, so where does your family live? He says, my family lives in ba Barry. Now, where is Barry? In the Scottish Hebrides, there's an island called Barry. And he describes his house as a four-bedroom house, there's this, there's that, there's this. So they actually visit the island. And exactly how he has described this house of his is exactly what happens. Now, Hindus would jump the gun and they would say, reincarnation, what did we tell you? Isn't it? Mm -hmm. So, then you have another child who uh, 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 has memories of someone else. And one of the funniest ones which I encountered was when a father was changing his son's nappy. The son said to his father, you changed my nappy, I used to change your nappy. Oh. <laughs> and the father began to laugh. He said, how is that? He said, I changed your nappy. He laughed it off. But he said to him, the two-year-old boy said to him, uh, uh, I, I'm your father. So just to check, just to assess whether this is, uh, you know, he's... So he got a picture, which no one had access to, of a vehicle. And he showed that two-year-old boy that vehicle, that picture. And the boy looked at that vehicle and he said, that's my first car. How does science explain this? Science is baffled. Science has no knowledge of how... Oh, of course, the Hindus come into the equation and say, told you so, reincarnation. But the reincarnation theory would be successful, but all the cases of such children who have memories of a past life, their memory stays with them up till the age of, of uh, uh, innocence. When they become mature, memory gone. So, what's going on here? After all, when we claim that every question is answered in this Qur'an, why are we not answering this? Why are we not looking at this? Because we have limited our inquiry into the Qur'an to very, you know, uh, um, uh, uh, um, uh, very, um, just to headlines. We haven't looked at the detail. And once we start looking at the detail, we start understanding, did I have a past life? And when you ask yourself that question, did I have a past life? Then the answer is, wa kuntum You had an existence. And in that existence, there is a credible existence which you had. So then Allah talks about that. Then he says, look, whatever I, however I created you, whatever I've done, everything is for you. Now having said everything is for you, now he starts, and on the face of it, and as, it, as I told you, scholars don't, relate one verse to another. Relating one verse to another is a master science of the Qur'an. Not every high street or back street scholar can do that. Because what is required in order to do this is you have to stand back from the text. And I don't mean this in a disrespectful way, but you have to try to put yourself in the shoes of the author. And I don't say in a disrespectful way because... Allah is beyond uh, such uh, measures. But it's a, uh, it's a metaphor. You know, like you say, look, stop thinking the way you are. Try to look at it from my shoes. That doesn't mean any disrespect. All it means is look at it from my point of view. Now you have to examine. Remember the wathi I told you of Hazrat uh, 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 Imam Malik and Zunnun Misri. The Imam Malik uh, 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 was no doubt one of the greatest ulama of his time, of whom the Maliki fiqh emerged and uh, uh, he was Ahle Medina and Imam Malik had a great state of scholars used to wait for him for months to have a sitting with him that's how Allah had given him such grace Imam Malik alayhi rahma when he knew that in Medina Munawra there is a person by the name of Zunnun who everyone assumed was a madman everyone thought he's a madman when Imam Malik realized that Zunnun is on the way to Medina he would Greet Zunun Misri barefoot outside of Medina. Mm. And people used to ask him, Well, is there any knowledge greater than the knowledge of the Quran? We pursue you for your knowledge of the Quran. 
And, uh, and what is it that this madman offers you that you don't already have? And Imam Malik alayhi rahmah responds and he says, You follow me because I have knowledge of the Qur'an. I follow him because he has knowledge of the author of the Qur'an. So you have to, again, I don't mean this, it's a metaphor. It's for the record. You have to look at this text from the perspective of the author. Look at the, the, the uh, again, I use this word respect because we can't uh, uh, use a word which applies to humans or uh, creation to Allah. Look at the emotion in this. Look at the passion in this. Having then told you your existence, then everything is for you. Now he starts, is qala rabbuka lil malaikati inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa. And when, and when Allah said to the angels, I want to create a khalifa, a viceroy in the earth. Now on the face of it, what has this got to do with the preceding verses? This is a vakiya, this is a, a story that happened trillions of years ago of which uh, 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 the proceedings are described but what is the relationship of these verses to the preceding verses this is the first question we have to ask ourselves what is the proceeding and remember in the preceding verses what is the theme you oh human you you are the subject you are the object of this dialogue and your uh, quest is to know your purpose so now I'm going to tell you a story about your purpose. Can you see the content? You know when a, 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 um, a teacher explains to the students a theory, then he says, now I'm going to show you an example. Yeah? So this is now an example of the purpose. But before we dive into this, the word what is in Arabic is a grammatical word and it has a hidden verb in it, what is. So you have is and iza. Iza is when in the future. And is is when in the past. Is iza. Past, future. When we say what is and when, it refers to the past tense. But in it there is a hidden verb. And that is remember. Vazkur. Yad ki jiye. Remember. So if I say to you, when we had coffee, in this statement, there is a, uh, a, a, an assumption or a reminder to you, and remember when we had coffee. You see? And remember. So now, who is the author, Allah, and who is he talking to? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said, Zala, yaad ki ji, oh my beloved, and remember. And you only ask someone to remember something who is able to then if i said to you remember you went shopping in i don't know uh, 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 um, glasgow you have never been to glasgow so you only offer a memory to someone who has knowledge of that memory so can you imagine the memory of rasulullah <laughs> from this <laughs> and oh my beloved remember <laughs> when allah said to the angels and remember and the, 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 so you see the scheme of this dialogue. And remember, qala, and the, 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 the emphasis is rabbuka, your Lord. Now, in Arabic, we have ka, kuma, kum. Ka is for one, kuma is for two, male. And kum is for three. And then when you have one woman, you say ka, kuma, kum, ki, kuma. Ki is one female, Kuma is two females, Kunna, Kunna, more than two females. Ka, Kuma, Kum, Ki, Kuma, Kunna. Uh, just as a side point, when we greet each other, what do we say? Salam. What does that mean? Salam upon? It should be, when you meet one person, you should say, Assalamu alayka. Salam to you, single. But we don't say ka or we don't say kuma, we say kum, all of you. And you should respond grammatically, sorry, there's only one of me here. Or if you go to a woman and you say assalamu alay, the correct grammatical it should be assalamu alayki, if it's a one woman. Or if it's more than two women, 
Assalamu alaikum. But no, whether you meet a man, whether you meet a woman, you all, even when you meet a child, you say Assalamu alaikum. Mm. Salam to you all. I'm not going to answer that question. Maybe at the end, if you remind me. So I don't want to get out of that uh, 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 thing. So, Rabbuka, Aapke Rab, your Lord. Look at the dialogue between Allah and His Rasul. Oh, my beloved, and remember when your Lord, look how much love there is in this. You know, say, uh, 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 you know, when a father talks to his uh, children, uh, and your father achieved this goal. Your father, this is a, an expression of love, you know. Your father did this for you. Your fa- this is a, an expression. So, oh my beloved, remember when your Lord, I like it, he's the Lord of Alameen. He's the Lord, Rabbul Alameen, we've uh, come across that. But he here refers to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Zameer of Ka is Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Rabbuka. Lil malaikati. Malaika, when he said to the malaika, why to the malaika? Why to the malaika? If you look at the chronology of this event, at that juncture, there were a whole plethora of creation, but the most superior creation at that time were the malaika. At that time. And those angels were supreme. And what was the basis of their supremacy? You have to also understand this. The basis of their supremacy was attributed to a number of factors. Number one, they were sinless. Angels don't sin. Number two, they were errorless. They don't commit error. They fulfill the command of Allah as it is. There is no ifs or buts. They are. The third thing is that they manage the governance of this whole universe on the order of Allah. When it rains, when it, the sun shines, what happens? There are, there's hadiths which describe angels in charge of this. Even now, angels are in charge. So angels were the, you could use the word, governors of this universe. They were the governors. They were the cre- most superior creation at that time, and they were consulted by Allah. So this shows Allah Azza wa Jal, who can fa'alu lima yurid. He does whatever he chooses. The Quran says, fa'alu lima yurid. He does whatever he chooses, but despite that absolute discretion he has, he still consults. So consultation. Is the Sunnah of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala? Yeah, you know this uh, 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 concept that the Amir is uh, 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 not uh, liable to consultation to anyone. This is not an Islamic concept. An Amir, a real Amir, will always engage in consultation. fil amal. The Quran talks about. It. Well, let's not go there. So Allah consults, but the purpose of this consultation is not like I consult you, and that consultation is because. Uh, uh, it could be uh, well possible that you could know something I don't. And the purpose of consulting is to enrich my understanding. But Allah's purpose of consultation is not to enrich his understanding. It is to promote a certain cause. You know, sometimes you don't ask questions uh, 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 out of ignorance. You do it because you want to promote an understanding of something. So... He asks the angel, and remember, O oh my beloved, when your Lord Qala said to the angels, Inni jailun fil ardi khalifa. I want to create upon this earth a khalifa. Now note the words, fil ard, on the earth, not fil alameen, not in the universe, just in the earth, I want to create a khalifa. Now, at this juncture, most commentators pass by. They don't elaborate on this. But it's absolutely paramount that we understand what the word Khalifa means here. Because this word Khalifa is the heart of what connects this verse to the previous verses. Because everyone sitting in this room, whether you appreciate it or not, you are all Khalifas of Allah. 
Me? No, 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 no. I can't. I'm a sinner. I'm really bad. I'm this. Sorry. You have been given a title, and you don't even understand what that title means. You haven't even bothered exploring. Me? Khalifa? What does that mean? Is it just a title? Have I done something to deserve this? Have I attained this through uh, uh, um, knowledge or through zuhud or taqwa? No. When you were born, it was written on your CV. Khalifa. You are Khalifa. But what does this word Khalifa actually mean? Before we dive into this word, now let's look at the response of the superior race. And they say that it is said that angels don't have an intellect or don't have, but that's absolutely wrong. They do. Look at their response. As they didn't require an elaboration of what is Khalifa, they knew what was Khalifa. We're going to talk about Khalifa. They knew exactly what Khalifa entailed. Look at their attack. Look at the nature of their intellectual appraisal of this qom, this uh, 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 species, who are going to be given the crown of Khilafat. Look at their response. And what a carefully calculated response they gave. Qalu, they said, Attaj'alu, and this is a question mark, Attaj'alu Hamza istifhamiya. Attaj'alu? Are you going to make? So they are, uh, um, they, they're not questioning Allah, but they are, it's almost, they are quizzing themselves. Attaj'alu fiha? Are you going to create in it, may yufsidu fiha, those who will do fasad? Terror. Where yes, fikud dima and rivers of blood will flow. Look at the negative. You see, they started off with the negative. Now, some people say this referred to Adam alayhi salam. I'm sorry. Because Adam alayhi salam did not make rivers of blood flow. He did not do facade on the earth. This al-Khalifa refers to the human race. So what the angels did to advocate their case, they presented a negative dimension of the human race. And instead of looking at the best of the best, they looked at the worst of the worst. That's how you do it, isn't it? Isn't it? When you buy goods, uh, 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 you know, and, you, and now in Europe there's no culture of bartering. But when you barter, well, I still barter, even when I go to Wix, I always barter. I, I, I don't, oh, well, this wood is warped and this has got a chip on here and this is, why not? 10%, 20%, why not? So when you want to uh, haggle, you find the faults first. And, 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 and the uh, uh, shopkeeper, he says, well, okay, I acknowledge these chips, but look at the good parts also. But what the angels did Rather than simply attacking the human race, they also looked at the good ones. You know, they, they looked at the, the worst of the worst. Who are they? Terrorists. Yeah. People who make rivers of blood flow. Fasad fil ard. And then he looked, they looked at the best of the best. So they presented their case on both sides. So when they looked at the best of the best, they thought, what are the best of the best going to do that we can't do? And then when, of course, they had knowledge of the Qur'an. And the knowledge of the Qur'an was, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ We created humans and jinns for our ibadah, for our worship. So they got that evidence, looked at the best of the best, and said, نَحْنُ نُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِكَ وَنُقَلِّسُ لَنْ Are we not enough for your praise and your sanctity? This is what we do. Why are you duplicating this... Uh, 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 um, prerogative for this race for this qom and then look at Allah's response this response if you uh, allow me to say this is not a, a scholarly response this is a typical Sufi response <laughs> at the sum of base response I know what you don't know I know what you don't know you know there's a scholarly response the scholarly response is 
let's evaluate what you said and I will answer you at your level. But when uh, 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 the self-based response is, man, man, I know what you don't know. It's like Khizr al-Islam saying to Musa al-Islam, I know what you don't know. <laughs> and this is the self-based response. So, uh, so in the world of uh, 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 Sharia, they say you should question. And in the world of Tariqa, they say you should question, but in your mind, but not uh, uh, pose the question, the answer will come to you. So here, Allah, Allah's answer is very, very, you know, the self of base. I know what you don't know. So this is a conversation that takes place. Now let's go back and say, what is Khalifa? That's the burning question. That's the million dollar question, is it not? What is Khalifa? You, before you were born, well, us, we can say, we were born with two crowns on our head. Two crowns which we did not deserve or we did not uh, 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 earn. We did not deserve and we did not earn. The first crown is that we are Khalifa. Khalifa Tullah Fil Ard. We are Allah's Khalifa on this earth. Number one, we don't deserve this, do we? But we were given this by birth. The second crown which we have on our head is that Allah Azza wa Jal made us in the Ummah of Rasulullah I don't think, again, we deserve this honor there were people in the previous ummah who were far greater than us they were deserve it if you look at their amal their amal they were deserve it of this title of being the ummatis of you know but um, you know we were given the the privilege that prophets were given because prophets were ummatis of rasulullah yeah uh, so we were not that we are like prophets astaghfirullah no prophets are far higher than us but we were given that same category that you are ummatis of Rasulullah so Musa alayhi ummah read la ilaha illallah Musa kalimullah but Musa alayhi himself does not read la ilaha illallah Musa kalimullah he reads la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah why because his boss his imam al anbiya is Rasulullah he's an ummati of Rasulullah so anyway now let's come on to this question what is Khalifa this is a million dollar question and Scholars have historically dog, uh, dodged this question in the hope that uh, people don't really go too far. In the fear that if you go too far, you could go to a danger zone and you could slip. And when you slip, you could lose your iman. The people of the Tasawwuf, on the other hand, talked in a different domain and... Uh, People couldn't relate to it. In fact, the ulama, the scholars, pronounced fatwas of shirk upon them. How can you say this? How can you say this? How can you say this? Huh? Sheikh Al Akbar Muhyiddin Ibn Arabi, you will know him and his works, probably one of the most boldest writers of the summer on this earth. Many scholars wrote fatwas of kufr against him, but Imam Ibn Taymiyyah saluted him. And he wrote a commentary on his book. He did. Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani, he came out with so much which people couldn't understand. But even people like Ibn Taymiyyah and his students, they saluted him. No, no messing. When it comes to these people, we may not understand what they say. But these people are in a domain of their own. Yeah. So, uh, when these people used to talk, people couldn't... Unless you don't enter their arena, you can't understand what they're saying. Let me give you the Sakani al Hubbuka Satil Visali. I said to my intoxicant, Nahwi Ta'ali, come close to me. This is almost like a person sitting with a pint of alcohol in front of him and saying, Come to me. <laughs> this is Ghazbak Sheikh Abdul Qadr Jilal. سكان الحب كاسات الوسال فقلت لخمرتي خمرة أنا أسد ماي خمر نحوي تعالي كنتني ساعات ومش عبرنا قريت so they these people were interested secrets but the problem is because the public were not close to the Quran therefore scholars feared quite rightly that if you don't understand the Sawwuf according to the Qur'an, 
you will commit shirk. That's why scholars close the door. Said, sorry, don't go there. We're not going to talk about this. Here, yeah. I mean, if I tell you there is a very great Allah, his name is Hazrat uh, Sultan al Arifin Sultan Bahu. And if I quote you one share of his, I, I think you would, uh, if you were a classical scholar, you would faint. He says, Zuban meri kun barabar, mora kam kalam dehu. My tongue is like the kun. You know, Allah says, when Allah intends to inna ma amruhu is a harada shay'an, an yaqula lahu kun. When Allah intends something, he says kun, and it happens. So he says, Zuban meri kun barabar. Zuban meri kun barabar, mora kam kalam dehu. I can turn anything upside down which is written in the, in the, by the Qalam. You know the Qalam which wrote everything. Now if you ask any high street or back street alim, what do you think, without telling them who said this, what do you think of this? They will say this is shirk. This is shirk. And yes, it is shirk if you look at it on its plain meaning. But behind this, if you understand it through their eyes, a different picture emerges. You cannot... Uh, 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 a, when a person is intoxicated, his perception of what is, is different to the person who is sober. The one who is sober <coughs> will apply his mental faculties. But the one who is intoxicated, his intellect will be overwhelmed by the intoxicant. So these people who were intoxicated by the love of Allah. And it's an intoxicant. These people who were intoxicated by the love of Allah, their language was very different. The problem is, the public didn't know where to go. You sit in their company, and the scholars will say they preach heresy, kufr. And you sit in their company, and it's just round around a garden like a teddy bear, and that's it. You don't know where to go. But the key is coming back to the Qur'an. There is no tasawwuf that cannot be reconciled with the Qur'an. And if something that conflicts with the Qur'an, it's not tasawwuf. So, let's come back to the point. Khalifa. What is Khalifa? What is the real... After all, we are Khalifatullah fil ard. What does that mean? It's written on your CV. You may not write it. It may not be relevant for the purposes of your employment. It may not be relevant for the purposes of your... You know, uh, social life. But I'm sorry, it's right at the top of your CV. That's your first title. Be even before the Mr. or Mrs. Khalifa Tullah. You are Khalifa. So what does Khalifa mean? Now, it's a very dangerous game. Look at what the angels oppose. After all, it's got to be something big. That the angels say, no, 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 no. And they're quizzing themselves. So it's got to be something big. And if we understand what this is, Maybe our lives could be changed. Maybe our emphasis in our life could be changed. Because our emphasis in life is just that machine-like lifestyle which we lead. But when we come and understand what it means to be Khalifatullah fil ard, then our life changes its course and direction. So let's start the discussion. There are two kinds of Khilafah. Now, this, this, start, this is the discussion where scholars... Start off, God. We have to embrace both. We, we're not going to leave one and take the other. We're going to embrace both. So, classical scholars will start this discussion and they will say there is two kinds of khilafa. Khilafate amma and khilafate khasa. Khilafate amma is general khilafat. Every, if you allow me to use this word, Tom de Kohari is a khilafa. <coughs> on, on that definition, every member of the human race no matter how heinous or how, uh, 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 how much of a barbarian he or she is, they are still Khalifa in the sense of Khilafat Amma. Then there is what you call Khilafat Khasa, <coughs> specific Khilafa. So, specific Khilafa is a governance and a, 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 a rule. And that specific khilafa, uh, khilafa is where Allah Azza wa Jal appoints 
a human to rule over others. So for example, amongst prophets, uh, there were some who were rulers. One of them was, you may have come across him, Hazrat Dawood alayhi salam. And Allah says in the Quran, Ya Dawood, O oh Dawood, Inna ja'alna ka khalifatan fil ard. We made you khalifa on this earth. No, khalifate, khilafate amma. This is khilafate khasa, specific khilafa, governance, rule, authority. Inna ja'alna ka khalifatan fil ard. Fahkum bayna nasi bil haq. And rule over people with haq, with justice. Don't look at their religion. Don't look at their caste, their status. Justice will rule to the principles of justice. Fahkum bayna nasi bil haq. And that's why even when the Sahaba used to sit in a judicial capacity, they were not interested in the religion of the, uh, uh, of the plaintiff or the defendant, the, 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 the uh, claimant, or the, they weren't interested. That is why when Hazrat Ali came to the court of Sayyidina Umar on the, with a case of a lost shield, Hazrat Ali claimed this is mine. A Jewish person on the other hand claimed it was his. Sayyidina Umar said to Sayyidina Ali, where is your evidence? You are the mudda'i, you are the claimant, where is your evidence? Hazrat Ali said, I don't have any. I recognize this to be mine. And Sayyidina Umar said, sorry? The evidence does not stack up in your favor. You are not entitled to this sword. In front of justice, there is equality. There is absolute equality. And then it says, If you want to be in governance, do not be a slave of your desire. Why? Because when you become a slave of your desire, it will interfere with your capacity to rule. That was the problem with Yazid. Yazid was a slave of his desire. And Imam Hussein was not willing to endorse a Khalifa who's, uh, 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 who was a slave of his desire. And the servitude of his desire meant when you become a slave of your desire, then nothing stands in your way. He was openly uh, uh, violating Sharia. There was no, you know, uh, and I can do what I like. It's like, it's like uh, 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 the Khalifa of um, uh, of um, Damishk, Walid, I think Walid. Um, he was so drunk, you know, they used to drink as if this doesn't apply to us. He was a Khalifa of Damishk. Sahaba were reading namaz behind him, Fajr namaz, and instead of two rakat, he read four. That's how drunk he was from the night before. You see, so when you become a slave of your uh, nafs, then rules don't mean anything to you. So Allah says, O oh Dawood, rule with justice and don't be a slave of your nafs. So, this is what we call Khilafat Khasa, specific Khilafat. Now let's come into the other world. Now, I could present to you and go into detail with what I quoted of as a Sultan al Arifin, but that's too heavy. So I found that the most, uh, 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 the most um, productive conversation on this, a discourse of what is Khilafah, was delivered by none other than Dr. Allama Iqbal. Why? Because Iqbal wasn't just an alim, he stood back and he, he looked at what was going on and he absorbed what was going on. So then when he talks of Khalifa, look at, look at uh, uh, his, um, look at his um, symbolism, his understanding of Khalifa, he says, Every moment of a mu'min on this earth comes with with glory, a new kind of glory, a real mu'min. This is the climax of a mu'min who understands what he or she is, what his role is. 
He says for that for that moment who understands his real or her real purpose, Har Lehzay Momin ki Nay An Nay Shan Guftar me Kirdar me Allah ki Burhan. Guftar his conversation. Kirdar his conduct. Allah ki Burhan. The word Burhan in the word in the Quran you have the word Aya. Aya means sign. But Burhan means the greatest sign. The ultimate sign. That's why Allah says about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam The greatest sign of Allah came to you. The greatest sign. When Yusuf Alayhi Salaam was in the chamber alone with Zulikha, وَلَقَدْ هَمَّتْ بِهِ وَهَمَّ بِهَا They approached each other. لَوْ لَا أَرْرَعَ بُرْهَانَ رَبِّهِ until they saw a great sign of their Lord. What was that sign? We'll talk about that. But here he says, Gufta, he's talking about the Mormon, you. He says, Guftar me in his conversation. Kirdar me in his characteristics. Allah ki burhan. He is a living symbol, a sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ask yourself, look yourself in the mirror and say, Am I a sign of Allah? Is my uh, talk, is my conduct a sign of Allah? And then he says, oh, We know that there are 99 names of Allah. Actually, there's more than 99 names, but 99 names as in, as mentioned in the Quran. He says, Qahariyo, Ghaffariyo, Quddusiyo, Jabrut. He selects four. Qahari, and he, this is not a random section. Let's just stick in any four names. Qahariyo, Jabariyo, Qahariyo, Ghaffari. Allah is Qahar. Allah is Ghaffar. <coughs> Allah is Qudus. Allah is Jabrut. Let's just translate it. Qahar is the one with uh, 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 Qahar, the one, the prevailing one. One with a, a, a strict regime. Uh, Ghaffar, the one who forgives. And then Qudus sacred jabrut omnipotent these are four attributes of allah and you know what allama says he says qahariyo ghaffariyo quddusiyo jabrut ye char anasir milte hain to banta hai musliman when these four attributes come together then a person becomes a real muslim not just by saying i'm a muslim or by registering it on your birth certificate or your whatever certificate. He says if you really want to reflect being a Burhan, the sign of Allah, then these four elements have to come in your life. What? Qahar. That's quite a... Some people misunderstand this and they said, well, how can you allow a human to inherit an attribute of Allah? Hmm? Do you follow the argument? They say, how can you attribute an, how can you uh, uh, give an attribute which belongs to Allah to humans? Well, there's a logical answer and there's a technical answer. Logical answer is, we are Hay, we are living. Is that correct? Yeah. And Allah is Hay. <coughs> so what's the difference? We are living, Allah is living. Allah is as Sami, the listener. We are listening. Allah is Basir, the one who sees. We are seeing. So what's the difference between Allah and us? The difference is, we see, he sees. We hear, he hears. We live, he lives. But our seeing, our listening, our life has a beginning and an ending. His seeing, listening, life has no beginning and no ending. So the word is the same, but when we apply it to Khalik, it will have a different meaning. When we apply it to Makhluk, it will have a different meaning. So I thought I'd clarify that because... I don't want someone in the years to come to hear this and think, oh, this is shirk. How can you say, Qahariyo, Ghaffariyo, Quddusiyo, Jabaru, these are uh, 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 attributes of Allah. And he's saying, no. He's saying, when these attributes in you begin to color your personality, then you become a real Muslim. So let's go through these attributes. Qahar, Qahar. 
one of you know uh, um, um, uh, one of uh, uh, prevailing rule ghaffar forgiving if a person finds that they are not amenable to forgiving then that means that they are not allowing that attribute uh, the sign of a, a real mu'min is uh, what's that verse um well uh, mean and raise and they and they uh, uh, and they drink their uh, anger will afina and in nas and they forgive people you know ask yourself is there someone who has wronged me so that I can forgive him in fact Imam Hassan and Hussein their methodology was very different because the Prophet said whoever asks forgiveness first even if he is uh, uh, right he will get reward more his reward would be greater. So when Imam Hassan and Hussein used to play with each other, Imam Hassan used to say to Imam Hussein, "You ask for forgiveness from me." He used to say, "No, you ask for forgiveness from me." People used to think that they are saying it because they stand by the truth themselves, but no, he used to say, "Brother, you ask because I want you to get more reward. <laughs> I want you to get more reward." And then your brother would say, "No, no, no, brother. Why should I have this reward? You ask forgiveness from me so that you get more reward." Huh? So, ghaffari, forgiveness. We find that we hold grudges with people. Years and years pass by, we hold grudges. We don't speak to them. This is not an attribute of Allah's Burhan. It says, Kahariyo, ghaffariyo, quddus, sacred. Buzurgi. We have a buzurgi that we don't realize. And then, Jabrut. Let's move on. Ye char anasir hu, to banta hai musalman. And now, He's, uh, you know, when uh, this is um, now he's given the theory. Now he's giving a, a I, I, I won't say sales pitch. Now he's giving the practice of this. You know, when you become a real Muslim, a real mu'min, oh, oh, oh. he says, Hamsaya Jibril ni bandai khaki. Hamsaya, Hamsaya, what's Hamsaya? Oh, you human being, don't you realize you are the neighbor of Jibreel? You are the neighbor of Jibreel. You know, Jibreel's status amongst the angels, you know, the, the generals amongst the angels are called Mala'ul A'la. They are the generals. The angels are like army. They're like the army. They have the brigadiers. They have the uh, major generals. They have different ranks. The ones right at the top are Mala'ul A'la. And Jibreel is the most supreme angel of Mala'ul A'la. The most, or I think we could say, he is the most supreme angel of Allah. And Dr. Allah Iqbal says, Hamsaya Jibreel, Bandai Khaki. You are the neighbor of Jibreel, don't you realize? Yani, your status. Your maqam, which Allah has given you, you live in the vicinity of Jibreel, but you don't realize. In fact, if you allow me, there's what you call tafsir al-Quran bil-Quran, and there's what you call tafsir al-Shair bil-Shair. Shair ki ta, uh, 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 you explain a share with another share. Allama Iqbal says, he says, ki haq se farishtone Iqbal ki ghammazi. One day the angels got fed up of Iqbal and his poetry and this. They went to Allah and complained. And what did they say? So when a, a woman is about to be, uh, become beautified for the purpose of marriage, she is decorated with hina. So he says, Fitrat, nature, has many uh, ugly faces to it. But he says, this Iqbal, he puts hina on everything. He doesn't see the, the worst in anything. Even that which is ugly, he puts hina on it. Gustaq This is impure and he puts hina on it. As in he beautifies it. Gustaq hai ye karta hai fitrat ki hina bandi. And then he says, Khaki hai magar. Khaak. He's made of earth. Khaki hai magar. Iske andaz hai aflaki. He is made of earth, but his mannerisms are like the people of the earth. 
سبحان اللہ ہم سایہ جبریل امی بندہ خاکی خاکی ہے مگر انداز خداوندی یعنی کاشی ہے نہ رومی شامی نہ سمر کر دی یعنی صحیح سکھ لائی فرشتوں کو آدم کی تڑپ اس نے ہی ٹھوٹ دی اینجلز وٹ اٹ فیلز لائک ٹو بی ہیومن بینگ وٹ یو ہیو ٹو گو تھرو آن اے ڈیلی بیسس آل دوز فورسز دیر آر ورکنگ اگینسٹ اس آل دوز فورسز دا نفس امارا دا حمزاد جن آل آف دیز فورسز ورکنگ اگینسٹ اس اسے سکھ لائی فرشتوں کو آدم کی تڑپ اس نے آدم کو سکھاتا ہے آداب خدا بندی And he teaches a human, the human being the etiquettes of the barga of Allah Azza wa Jal. So, ham saayay jibreel ami bandai khaki. He said, hai iska na shayman na bukhara na badikshah. He says, this earth is not his uh, uh, perch. You know, perch where the uh, uh, bird rests. Mm. This earth, this human is beyond this earth. This human, the real bandai khaki, He is beyond this earth. And then he says this. This is for me, for Dars-e Quran, this share is the climax of this. He, there are many more shares, but this share is the climax. He says, Ye raaz kisi ko nahi maloom ke mu'min. Ye raaz, raaz means secret. Ye raaz kisi ko nahi maloom ke mu'min. Qari nazar aata hai. He reads the Quran. Qari. Qari means the one who reads the Quran. Qari nazar aata hai. Haqiqat mein hai Quran. He, you look at him, he's reading the Quran, but actually he is the Quran. Subhanallah. Banda-e khaki. He, that, that is why when uh, say, someone asks Sayyidah Aisha, radiyallahu anha, tell us about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She said, He is the Quran. He's a walking, talking Quran. When he stands, that becomes the Quran. When he sits, that becomes the Quran. When he sleeps, that becomes the Quran. So, Alama Iqbal says, Ye raaz kisi ko, Ye raaz kisi ko nahi maloom ke mu'min. No one knows the secret. Everyone thinks he's reading the Quran. But very few people know he is the Quran. The Quran is in him. I'm not referring to Hafiz Quran. The Qur'an. What is the Qur'an? Oh, what is the Qur'an? The Qur'an is the dialogue of Allah. It says, when the mu'min in his uruj, when he speaks, he represents Allah. His dialogue is the dialogue of Allah. That's why um, uh, 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 it says, When your father is angry with you, that is the ghazab of Allah. Huh? So, when uh, 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 the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam um, uh, took some stones and pebbles and he threw them, uh, the Quran says, وَمَا رَمَيْتَ إِذْ رَمَيْتَ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ رَمَا My beloved, when you took, took the, picked up those stones and when you threw those stones, you didn't throw those stones, Allah threw those stones. <laughs> Allah threw those stones. Then he says on another, in another part of the Qur'an, he says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُبَايُعُونَكَ Those people who did bay'a on your hands, Ya Rasulullah, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُبَايُونَ Allah, they did bay'a uh, to Allah. Mm-hmm. And then just to make sure that those people don't try to intellectualize this and say, no, no, it meant symbolic. Allah says, يَدُ اللَّهِ فَوْقَ أَيْدِيهِمْ It wasn't your hand on top of their hand, it was Allah's hands. <laughs> Yet Allah is free from hands. Mm-hmm. Allah doesn't have hands. But you see the proximity between Al- and then um, uh, the Sahaba who uh, um, uh, uh, killed the Mushrikeen in Badr. Allah says, no, 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 they didn't kill. لَمْ تَقْتُلُوهُمْ نَهِي نَهِي هَرْجِزْ نَهِي إِنْهُوْ نَهِي قَتَلْ كِيَا لَمْ تَقْتُلُوهُمْ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ قَتَلَهُمْ Allah killed them. <laughs> So the actions of the Sahaba were attributed to Allah. Do you see how proximate the Mu'min is to Allah? How much proximate? So this is what happens. That Qari nazar aata hai, haqiqat mein hai, Qur'an. Then he says, this is a lot, uh, there's more shares, but then he says, Qudrat ke maqasid ka ayyar iske irade. His 
ambitions are the uh, ambitions of uh, Qudrat. And he says, Dunya mein bhi mizan, qiyamat mein bhi mizan. He is just in the dunya. Mizan, you know, the scale. Qiyamat mein bhi mizan. Halakhi, that's wrong technically. Because mizan is what will determine your status on the day of judgment. Good deeds, bad deeds. But Dr. Alama Iqbal says, no, 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 no. On the day of judgment, the mu'min is the mizan. How do you reconcile these two things? Here you have a scale saying this person's deeds are bad. And his bad deeds overwhelm his good deeds. Is the mizan correct? Is the scale correct? But on the day of judgment, Allah says, no. Yes, I, 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 I've acknowledged what this scale says about you. Now I want to hear what the mu'mineen say about you. And if the mu'mineen say, no, no, Allah, he was good. <coughs> then Allah will say, well, we don't need to bother with that. Because the mu'min has said he's good. Remember that hadith I told you of the janaza? Of uh, 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 where the Prophet ﷺ said, wajabat, wajabat, wajabat. Wajib huwa wajibu. Janaza kuzwa. Wajib huwa wajib huwa wajibu. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu said, What is wajib? What is wajib? He said, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that the mu'mineen were talking good about this person, this mayyit. Uski ta'arif kar rahe the. And the Prophet says, wajabat, wajabat. Ma wajabat ya Rasulullah. What is wajib? Wajabat lahul jannah. Now jannah is wajib upon him. Why? Because irrespective of what his scales say, irrespective of what the angels say, the mu'mineen have said he was good. So he's good. That's it. And then the Prophet ﷺ emphasizes, Antum shuhadaullahu fil ard. You are Allah's witnesses on this earth. Qiyamat mein mizan. When you give your verdict, Allah will give your... That's why on the day of judgment, Allah will say to the Ummah of Nuh salam, Did my signs not come to you? Did my prophets not come to you? They will say, no, Ya Rasulullah. Uh, they will say, no, Allah. No signs came to us. They will lie. Blatantly lie. Then uh, 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 um, Allah Azza wa Jal will ask Nuh alayhi salam, did you not send my, bring my signs to these people? They deny it. Nuh alayhi salam says, no, Allah, I bought your signs. I did my job. So then Allah will say, okay, where's your proof? Where's your proof? Allah is asking proof from his beloveds. Huh? This is not a show trial. This is a trial to show something else. He says, where is your proof? Nuh alayhi salam. You did your job. Where's your proof? He's not going to produce his timesheets. <laughs> <laughs> what will his proof be? <laughs> he says, the fact that I've done my job, my proof is the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa then Allah will ask us, you are willing to give proof that Nuh al-Islam did his job? Even though you lived several thousands years after him? Yes, Allah, we give evidence. You know, humans, you know, <laughs> that's how we are as humans. Then <laughs> Allah will say, where is your proof? Oh, oh Ummah of Rasulullah, where is your proof? And we will say, oh, oh, now where is our proof? They will say, uh, we will say, our proof is Muhammad Rasulullah. <laughs> he told us, we believed him. That's it. <coughs> so you can see that Allah will not ask Rasulullah, so, so now where is your proof? <laughs> Why? Because, inna arsalnaka shahidan wa mubashiran wa naziran wa da'iyan ilallahi bi iznihi wa sirajun munira. Oh, my beloved, you are shahid. You are a witness of everything that has happened. So your testimony, and, uh, you know, when Allah talks about this in the Quran, there's a very informal tone. This is a, we normally talk about the past. It was very nice. Remember last year we met in the park and had a picnic. This is the past we refer to. And Allah talks to his beloved about the future. Fakay for his ajit because time for them is their uh, slave. Fakay for his ajit na to per kaise hoga? Fakay for his ajit na min kulli ummatin bi shahidin. When we will call from every umma a witness, 
wa jina bika haulai shahida and now my beloved you will be the ultimate witness for all of this <coughs> so you see what dr alama now i've given you the most i will say safe understanding of khalifa now if you go to the people of the sawaf they will give you a totally totally not different but from this this is the 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 the, the um the, this is the um, these are the waves of the ocean alama has given us the waves now if you want to dive in go to the people of the sawaf the ulama of the sawaf <coughs> um and they will tell you a very different story they will tell you <coughs> sorry <coughs> they will tell you a very different story and those who reach that stage their perception became impaired because as humans our perception is prone to being impaired but it was impaired by their knowledge of this word khalifa so much that one of them stood up and said instead of annahu al-haq he said ana al-haq instead of saying he is the haq he says ana al-haq i am the truth and of course when this was promulgated in the streets of baghdad 922 ad he was hung he was hung Subhanallah. How did he reach that stage? Not through intellectual uh, uh, intuition. How to to reach that stage? You see, understanding that is one thing, but to reach it, how do you reach that stage? There is only one way, and that is the way of love. You say, I have nothing to offer you, my lord, but if I engage on that path of love, that's why when uh, someone came to Halaj, Mansur Hal, uh, Muhammad bin Hussein, Mansur Halaj, someone came to him and said. Um, what is ishq of allah what is ishq of allah he said come to my uh, hanging ceremony and then we'll see we'll take it from there so when he was hung subhanallah <coughs> the scenery of his hanging ceremony the front row seats front row seats were taken by all the top awliya of the time mm -hmm. junaid al baghdadi Oh, Hatim, you, you name all the top awliya of the time they stood to see this spectacle. Everyone was silent. And Mansoor Halaj looked up moments before the noose was tightened and he says, Mansoor, he's talking to God. Mansoor, <laughs> you gave away our secret. Look what we did to you. <laughs> Mansoor you gave away our secret that is why uh, uh, Mia Muhammad sahab uh, I fake kareem Abdullah he says Shah Mansoor ana al hakenda te kade na oh sharmaya tu hi mehram yaar Muhammad kenda kon baraya oh Muhammad uh, Mia Muhammad he says Shah Mansoor he said ana al haq and he was never shy but you know the secret why do you say Allah is baraya so Mansur Halaj before he was he said ana al haq ana al haq ana al the news tightened the news tightened but you could still hear his voice ana al haq ana al haq ana al haq so the mouth stopped functioning but the sound was still emerging so the khalifa who was there presiding over he said this is very uh, uh, this is very uh, scandalous so he said um chop his body into pieces and when they chopped his body into pieces they heard him laughing the voice of halaj laughing the voice coming from that body and saying ana al haq ana al haq ana al haq and uh, uh, then the khalifa of that time he said uh, this is scandalous make mince meat of his bodily parts to suppress this ana al haq and uh, um they made mince meat of his body but even then from the meat the voice was coming an al haq an al haq 
Then they said, what now can we do? They threw his meat into the river. And from the river, the voice of Anal Haq was coming. And the river was beginning to boil. As if this boiling water would flood Baghdad Sharif. So much so that uh, the Khalifa was very worried. Oh, what have I done? Then he went to Hazrat Junaid al-Baghdadi, who was the you know, most senior amongst the awliya at that time. He said, what should we do? From the river, his voice is coming, and the river is boiling as if it's going to come. Then Hazrat Junaid al-Baghdadi went to the river and said, oh, Allah, we now realize what is ishq. Ishq doesn't require this mortal body. When a person understands this secret, uh, then uh, this mortal body is insignificant for him. So there are those who engaged on that path who met such a fate. But there are those who met such a fate, but were Hazrat Bayezid al-Bustami. He used to be sat amongst his friends, and suddenly he would go into a state of wajad. And instead of saying Subhanallah, he would say Subhani, Ma'azamashani. So one of his uh, students said, Hazrat, this is shirk. We say Subhanallah, you say Subhani. <laughs> Ma'azamallah, you say Ma'azamashani. He says, is it shirk? He said, yeah. He said, so what's the saza of shirk? What's the uh, punishment for shirk? He said, death. He said, so next time I say, chop my head off. He said, really? Chop your head off? That's the order of Sharia, isn't it? He said, fine. So one day, Hazrat Bayezid al-Bustami was sat doing dars quran in the masjid and he went in a state of wajad. You know, and they went, subhanAllah, wajad. On the, on, the, uh, on the subject of wajad, Hazrat Ghazul Azam Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani was delivering dars quran and there was a very great alim who, uh, Ibn Jozi, his name was Ibn Jozi. He thought, let me check this Abdul Qadir out here. He claims that he knows a lot. So he came and sat in the dars. Ghaz Park was Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jalani was doing tafsir of the word Alhamd. Mm-hmm. So he said Alhamdu tafsir. So he shouted from the back. Alimtu, I know this. You know, there's an arrogant. I know this. So he did another tafsir. And he, Ibn Jozi shouted from the corner. He says, Alimtu, I know this. <laughs> then Ghaz Park did another tafsir of Alhamdu. He shouted again, Alimtu. On the seventh occasion, when Ghaz Park did tafsir, he said, for him to, he said, I don't know this, but I understand this. You know, trying to undermine. Mm-hmm. For him to, ninth time, eighth time, for him to, I understand. Tenth, for him to. On the eleventh tafsir of Surah Alhamd, when he said, Im- Imam Ibn Jawzi fainted. He said, Wallahi, I never heard this tafsir of Alhamd the way Abdul Qadir Jilani is. So they understood the depths of the Quran. And so, uh, 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 when uh, Hazrat Bayezid al-Bustami said, Slaughter, cut my head off, if you, this is shirk. He said, fine. So that, that particular student was very... You know. <laughs> so one day he was delivering their Quran and he went to the state of Wajad. Subhani ma'azam ashani, subhani ma'azam The guy stood up, he got his sword, he chopped his head off. As soon as he chopped his head off, the people in the masjid, they saw all over the masjid was the head of Bayezid al-Bustami mm-hmm. saying, Subha- laughing and saying, Subhani ma'azam ashani, Subhani ma'azam ashani. And after 10 minutes of such commotion, Hazrat Bayezid al-Bustami carried on his dars. <laughs> <laughs> he said, Wallahi, sir, I cut your head off. He said, you cut the head of Bayezid. Know that Bayezid is not on his own. <laughs> know that Bayezid is not on his own. That is why when uh, uh, I always give this example Tazkiratul uh, Awliya by Hazrat Fariduddin Attar about this is one of the first biographies of Awliya written by a wali Hazrat Fariduddin Attar from Nishapur he says Hazrat Bayezid one day and if you understand this is the cream of the cake he says one day in his spiritual journey Hazrat Bayezid went to the uh, spiritual journey not physical journey Spiritual journey. He went to the door of the Arsh. He knocked the door. Let me in. A voice came from the other side. Who is it? He said, Bayezid. 
The voice from inside said, Go away, there is no place for you here. He said, many months later, I came back to that door. And not the door. A voice from within came, who is it? He said, I don't know. I don't know. Namida Anamke, Jalaluddin Rumi writes, I don't know. A voice from inside came, go away, there is no space for you here. Bayezid said, many, many months later, I returned to the same door. I knocked. Who is it? And this time I said, it's you. And the door opened. <laughs> now, if I said this in a, a public gathering, people would execute me. They would say, this is shirk. But if you understand it from the intoxicated state they were, and that intoxication didn't impair their intellect, it enhanced their intellect. Because remember, our intellect, remember, I told you uh, that there are five sources of knowledge. And the fourth and fifth source are the internal intellect and wahi. So when you start to develop those sources of knowledge, then knowledge is brought to you rather than you go to knowledge. And so therefore, uh, I think I've given examples from awliya, but... Remember I said, it's always important to reconcile with the Qur'an. If a reconciliation with the Qur'an is not possible, that's not the sabuf. Let me give you an example of this from the Qur'an. Mm. How, here's the headline, how two can be one, but one remains one. How two can be one, but one remains one. Mm. Let me give you an example from the Quran. Musa is going. Pitch dark. No lamps, no light. Pitch dark. His wife is with him. He sees on top of a mountain. A fire. Isra'a naran. Faqala li ahli him kuthu. He says to his ahl, his wife. Im kuthu. You stay here. Inni anastu nara. I see a fire. Why? Because in those times when you saw a fire, travellers would often, they would travel at night because it's very hot in the day. In the Sinai Peninsula even now, to travel in the day is very difficult. So they used to travel at night. So he said, Im kuthu, you stay here, inni anastu nara, I see a fire. Why? Let me go there. La'alli atikum minha bi qabasin, let me get some fire for my wood. Oh, ajidu ala nasi, aw ajidu ala nari huda. Or I'll get some guidance, navigation. Fine, she stayed. Falamma ataha when Musa salam, approached that burning bush. There was a tree, it was burning, but it, there was no smoke, there was no fire. This is the. Falamma ataha nudia. Hamne kaha, Allah say, Nudiya, Hamne nidadi, Ya Musa, O Moses, Inni ana rabbuk. I am your Lord. Now, what was the mission of Musa alayhi salam? Where was he going? To get fire. No, no, no. What was his ultimate mission? That was his side trip. To get, uh, Where was he actually going? To huh? To get the commandments. No, 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 no. Not on this occasion. Where was he going? He was going back to Egypt, Cairo, to give his message, give da'wah of his uh, 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 message from Allah. Why? What was his message? La ilaha illallah. And what did Fir'aun say? The Quran says, Qala inni uh, ana rabbukum ala. I am the great Rabb. Now, Imagine this spectacle. There is Fir'aun who says, Ana Rabbukum al And there's a tree that says, Inni Ana Rabbuk. What's the difference? What's the difference? The difference is, Fir'aun is saying, I am Lord, I am Rabb, by his own volition. 
by his own authority. He had no authority. But this tree is not saying, I am your Lord. The tree is the tree. The tree is the tree. No one said the tree is Allah. But from within the tree, a voice emerges. Musa salam knows this is not the tree talking, this is Allah talking. Subhanallah. And then Allah introduces his geo... Oh, sorry, what's the... When you press your location? GPS. GPS. <clears throat> Allah is... How he is everywhere, we don't understand. Beyond our understanding. But on this occasion, Allah says, Amburika ba barkat hai, Surah Namal. Amburika man finnari wa man hawlaha. Ba barkat is Allah. Blessed is he who is in the fire and around the fire. Oh. <laughs> Those people who say that he's on the arsh. Haan bhai, ab batayye. Ba barkat hai wo jo aag me hai aur aag ke irda gird hai. Now we will say, ha ha, ji ji, bilkul mutashabi haad hai ji. Allah, ek jaga pe to nahi ho sakta na, ha na, of course. To phir ek jaga yaha nahi ho sakta, wahan kaha bachaya usko. Arsh pe, you know. So, Amburika, whenever I've said this to uh, uh, ulama who pro promulgate Ar-Rahmanu ala al-Arsh istawa, Ar-Rahman is uh, sat on the throne. When I say this verse, it kind of like, you know, it throws them off board. Amburika man sura namal. Amburika man finnari. He is finna. You know, Imam Abu Hanifa says, if you say that Allah is in this earth, that is kufr. Why? Because this water is in this glass. Allah is not in this earth the way this water is in this glass. Why? Allah is free from time and space. But Allah Himself says, Amburika man, man is He. Allah, Finnari, who is in the fire, woman hola and who is around him. You know what we're going to say here? The tree was not God. The tree was not Rab. What we say is that the tree, please, please learn this word, was a mazhar. Mazhar means anyone? What does mazhar mean? Hmm? Exam is hard, you know, through which expression. So, something which expresses something is called the mazhar. So, the tree, these are golden lines, the tree was the mazhar of the kalam of Allah. The tree was the mazhar of the kalam of Allah. Despite being the mazhar, expression of the kalam of Allah, the tree was an Allah. Mm -hmm. Allah was Allah, the tree was the tree. Huh? So, the, uh, uh, the tree was creation, the voice was Allah. They were one at that time, but they were separate. That's why um, uh, uh, tolerating Allah's... Uh, uh, when Musa al was able to sustain the kalam of Allah, naturally the next stage is you want to see Allah. But when he tried to see Allah, what happened? And yet he didn't see Allah and fainted. He saw a tajalla, a nur, and he fainted. فَجَعَلَهُ دَكَّنْ وَخَرَّ مُوسَى سَعِكَ And Imam Jalaluddin Rumi says at this juncture, he says, Musa is a yak jalwa ya sifat. Musa fainted, he only saw one jalwa of Allah. Musa, zuho shraft, yak jalwa ya sifat. Ya Rasulullah, tu ene zat mi nagri dar tabassami. Ya Rasulullah, you forget about seeing Allah's attributes, you saw Allah's essence and you still smiled. Ma zagal basar wa ma taga. The Quran says, you know when you see something too much light, your, your eyes uh, flicker and, and you look away. So Allah says in the Quran, when the Prophet says, Allah, Ma zaghal basaru. Beloved, when you saw Allah, your eyes didn't flicker. Wa ma taga, and you didn't turn away. Ah, this is the power of your eye. So, uh, uh, Musa alayhi salam was able to sustain some attributes of Allah, 
but not others. But Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was a mazhar, was a mazhar of not only the attributes of Allah, but the essence of Allah. That is the exclusive prerogative. Every Nabi was a mazhar of one attribute or another of Allah. Like Musa was a he, he, uh, he was he experienced the kalam of Allah. So that's why when we uh, uh, understand the word khilafa, we understand there is a lot more at stake here. And the angels knew that this is a big, big game. Why? We are deserving of this title. That we are representatives of Allah. Now, after all of this, if I tell you that hadith, you'll understand it better. If I told you in the beginning, you'd have just got in one ear and out the other. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Inna Allah khalaqa Adam. Allah created Adam. Ala suratihi. In his own image. This is in the Bible also, by the way. If you say this uh, in its literal sense, shirk. But, ala suratihi, as in khalifa. What is the meaning of ala suratihi? E ala osafihi. In the image of his attributes. Jabbari, yo kahari, yo jabbari, yo ghaffari, yo kudusi, yo jabbari. In his image, in his attributes. So when you go home tonight, ask yourself this question. Do I reflect the values, the attributes of Allah? And if I don't, then that's my purpose in life. I want to be a khalifa, a real khalifa of Allah on this earth. And sometimes you don't have to achieve it. You are given a status irrespective. Mother's happiness is Allah's happiness. Father's happiness is Allah's happiness. <laughs> Mother had, didn't have to earn this reward. She was given it. But Allah, huh? father didn't have to earn anything. Allah gave them the status. The children were told, listen, you may disagree with your parents. You, they may be the most criminal people in the world, but they are your buzurk. Why? Allah has given them buzurki. La taqullahuma uffin wa la tanharuma. Don't say off to them and don't negative what they say. That doesn't mean to say, you know, uh, oblige if they force you to marry someone in the village back home. <laughs> what it means is that don't rebuke them. You know this? You know, you know, right? Why? Allah has given them a buzurgi. SubhanAllah. Allah has given them a buzurgi. And that buzurgi is qudusi. Allah has given them that qudusi without earning it. And if you serve them through that qudusi which they have over you, Ah, oh, when a mother raises her hands for her child. SubhanAllah. Blessed are those in this room who have mothers alive. Huh? When a mother raised... The Prophet ﷺ said on the night of Mi'raj, I saw that there are three du'as. Because with every du'a, angels come and take it to the Arsh, to Allah, to be presented. He said, but I saw on the seventh heaven, there are three du'as that reach the Arsh without the aid of angels. And one of those du'as is the du'a for mother. <laughs> so those of, of you who have parents, cherish them, value, they are quddus because Allah has given them this, even though they may be the worst criminals on this earth. They may be the worst criminals on this earth. But, la taqullahuma. Hazrat Abu Hurair, I used to say, Ya Rasulullah, I feel like killing my parents. They, they, they speak against you. I can't tolerate this. The Prophet says, they may be mushrik, but you must respect them. You must respect them. Shirk is the most heinous offense, but you still have to respect them. Abu Huraira used to go home and he used to respect him. He used to live with his mushrik parents until one day he realized that it's not about me talking to them. He went to Rasulullah and we'll just finish on this. He went to Rasulullah and said, Ya Rasulullah, do dua my parents accept Islam. <laughs> It's like you going to any buzzer and say, do dua. And then as soon as the Prophet lifted his hands, Hazrat Abu Dada ran away. Now imagine you go to any buzzer <laughs> and say, do dua. And as soon as he lifts his hand, you run away. <laughs> He'll think, are you, are you making fun of me? Or what, are you, what is this? He ran away. SubhanAllah. 20 minutes later he came 
and came straight into the feet of Rasulullah. The Sahaba asked, Abu Huraira, why did you run away after the Prophet? He said, I wanted to see who reaches home first, Abu Huraira or the dua of Rasulullah. He said, when I opened the door, my parents had already read Ashhadu Allah. This is the power of the dua of Rasulullah. What a beautiful point to finish. Why? Because uh, uh, Allah Azza says, uh, my beloved, whatever you want, whatever you want. This is the proximity. What is that? This is love. This is love. I've written what I've written. Lekin bata, teri raza kya hai. I'll change every... Why? You are my Khalifa. You are my Khalifa. I'll change everything what my Khalifa wants. I haven't done this for angels. I haven't done this for jinns. I haven't done this for animals. I haven't done this for any... But my beloved human, ask from me. Tell me what you want. And I will give you. That's why someone asked me two days ago, uh, is there such a thing as manifestation? Do you know what manifestation is? Manifest it. Yeah, there's all these American people, psychologists say, if you intend, I intend that I want to go to New York. Yeah. Why would you want to intend to go to New York? Anyway, I intend I want to go to New York. You will go to New York. They, they call it positive mental thinking. They come up with all these gimmicks. Law of attraction. Huh? Law of attraction. Law of, law of attraction. That's correct. Manifestation. So this uh, sister asked me this question from Australia. I said, this law of manifestation is for a mu'min who reaches that stage. And then Allah says, Bata teri Whatever you want. But you know what the funny thing is? When that mu'min reaches that stage, he says, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Imam Hussein, who is the owner of Hose Kosar. Oh, oh, oh. The owner of Hose Kosar. He could not provide a drop for his son. No, 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 no. That's not it. He had, he had the legal title to Jose Kosar. You know, the, the river that flows from paradise. But he said, no, no. Oh, Allah, if you've written this for me, <coughs> bring it on. <laughs> Why, my beloved has written this for me. And that's why when the Prophet ﷺ was told about this calamity, he didn't say, no, 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 oh Allah, please, no, 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 not for my Hussein. He said, Allahumma a'atil Husayna sabran wa ajra. Oh Allah, give my Hussein sabran and ajra. So you see, when you reach that stage of bata teri raza kya hai, you say, no, no, no. <laughs> my raza is in signal. What is your raza, oh Allah? Razi ba raza. That's, a, that's the next stage. This is Khilafah. Any questions? Just that thing as Sabi was saying um, at the end of the Assalamu Alaikum bit. You were going to explain that. Kum. <coughs> you see, Kum yeah, is more than two, two plus. So, when you meet a single individual, when you say Assalam to them, you are not only saying salam to them, but you recall from previous lectures, you are not alone. <laughs> you have two angels to start off with. Let's, let's start the drop down <laughs> list. You have two angels. That's a starting point. For inna alaykum la hafizin. You have many angels around you, protecting you. When you go to sleep at night, you are sleeping away. And there's angels guarding you. Subhanallah. A child is in the womb of its mother. An angel is guarding it. So around you, there is, every mu'min, there is a majlis of angels. Every mu'min. That's why the Prophet ﷺ says, Assalamu alaikum. To you all, to the angels. Yeah. So why did we say Assalamu We don't say that to Rasulullah ﷺ. Because you, ex uh, you give credence. Okay, the best way to understand this is, why do you say to, let's say you meet five women, and you say, Assalamu alaikum. Why kum? The grammatical uh, uh, word should be, 
Assalamu alaykum to you all women. But why do we use the masculine tense for women? You look at who is dominating that company. And because the domination is of masculinity, therefore you ascribe the salam not to femininity, to masculinity, because that's the dominant. Al-Rijalu qawwamun ala niza. So the, the, the buzurgi of the angels is given credence. So you attribute not femininity to angels. Unfortunately, much to the distaste of LGBT. <laughs> <laughs> you attribute masculinity because masculinity comes with a certain buzurgi. So even a woman, you will say, kum. Why? Because you are doing the haz of the company. But when it comes to the Prophet ﷺ, you don't say Assalamu alaykum. Why? Because his company is not more buzurg than him. You say Assalatu Assalamu alaykum upon you. There is no greater buzurg. And anyway, as it happened, he didn't have two angels. <laughs> Why? Because Allah gave him a receipt in the Quran. Qul inna salati wa nusuki wa mahyaya wa mamati. Lillahi Rabbil Alameen Ya Rasulullah Aapka Sab kuch It's for Allah Nothing of it's for your own Lillahi 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 It's for Allah Lillahi Guaranteed Stamped Lillahi Rabbil So those two angels weren't there But there were many angels around the Prophet ﷺ But they did not supersede in Buzurgi to the Prophet ﷺ That's why we say As-salamu alayhi Ya no, no, I don't. <coughs> uh, so you mentioned uh, there are uh, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu said that there are three duas at the Miraj. One was the dua of the mother. What were the other? Two? Oh, okay. The second dua is the dua of the Muslim, the one who is subjected to terror, oppression, <coughs> the Ah. Yeah, in Ghalib says, Ah, ko chahiye ek umar basar hone tak. But, ah, never do zulam on any human. Why? What is it? Bullish says, destroy a mosque, destroy a mandir, destroy whatever, but don't destroy the human heart. So, ah, when a human does ah, that goes straight to the arsh. And the third one, I forgot. I'll tell you next time, inshallah. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least you'll remember it for next time, inshallah. Yeah, yeah. And I'll make a point of looking it up again. <laughs> but what stands out is the dua of a mother. Subhanallah. 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 You know, I once met a, 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 a consultant in a hospital. He said, when my mother was alive, Subhanallah. He said, when my mother was alive, my kite just wouldn't come down. When he meant kite, he meant his life. He said, as soon as she died, that's it. SubhanAllah. He said, my life turned upside down. Then I realized the power of the dua of my mother. You know, and, and, and uh, we undervalue that dua of the parent. We look at them and say, no, no, they're not nek. You know, because our criteria is, nek admi ogo se dua ki kenge? But no. The beautiful thing about our parents is that they may be the worst sinners. SubhanAllah. But when they lift up their hands, that buzurgi which Allah has given them, Allah, SubhanAllah. That buzurgi which Allah has given them, SubhanAllah. And if your parents are um, one of need, then don't consider that need of theirs a burden upon you. I've seen many children, they, you know, they, they no, go home. Touch their feet, kiss their feet. Yeah, kiss their feet, touch their feet. You know, no matter how angry they are, fight with them in a loving way. <laughs> fight with them in a loving way. But don't upset them. Why? Upsetting them is upsetting Allah. In the raza of your father is the raza of Allah. Why? This is not on account of your father's amal, this is on account of the buzurgi which Allah has given them. Wa <laughs> 